Today on the Agile India podcast, Sean Dunn and myself are going to be talking about innovation. What makes companies innovative? What prevents people from being innovative in their jobs? Yeah, and what what spurred this conversation? Uh, I've got a friend who who posed a question recently, asked what causes some companies to be innovative and what prevents other companies from being innovative. And it's one of those things where we all like to think we're innovative and our companies are innovative, but that's not necessarily the case, is it? I guess, what do we mean by innovation? Are we, we're talking about uh, product innovation, technology innovation, uh, practices, that type of thing, or all of the above? Uh, I think all of the, the above. I think uh, we are including, uh, we're talking about transformational innovations, so those like generational leaps, like the first, the, the first smartphone, um, you know, cloud technologies that just, but we're also talking about the incremental innovations that happen on a daily basis, uh, on a daily ba- basis in our, in our products and ways of doing things. So I think we've got the aperture quite wide as to talk to the, both those types of innovation. Yeah. Well, one that comes to mind is just the, the simple act of, uh, developers and, and team members continuously developing and improving their skills. And so are they, do they have the time and space to be trying new technologies, learning new skills, this type of thing, and, and what kind of environment promotes that type of uh, behavior? Yeah, I agree. I, I, innovation can occur at the team level outside of a product just in terms of, okay, so um, what kind of frameworks are we using? What kind of tools are we, tooling are we using? Um, how do we have our uh, integration set up? What are our methods of... Um, our, our methods of working um, and there's new things going on in industry all the time and, and how can we be aware of those and, and experiment with them and learn with them and then maybe find out how they might actually help us solve our problems or make us better at doing things on a daily basis. To me, that is that is a large part of innovation, I think. A company I think about a lot with this stuff is uh, Hunter Industries who originated the practice of mob programming. and. I find it very fascinating what is it about this organization that created the space such that people could experiment to discover something new like this. And and the guys there, they talk a lot about safety and psychological safety. And and on the teams, I'm thinking, what does that mean? I guess I'm trying, what does that mean, psychological safety? It's the safety to try things, a risk an environment where risk taking is encouraged and and failure is not discouraged so i think one of these assumptions or these these basic principles is you can't have innovation without without risk of some kind and you can't have risk without some acceptance of uh of of failure um so what is it about companies like hunter industries what is it about their culture that communicates to the individuals that it's okay to do things that might not work and simply by the act of doing that they now have the freedom to try things like mob programming was never a guaranteed to be successful um and in many ways you know they've gone through many iterations of trying to discover what is going to work but but what is it that allow them to explore and discover and as you say it's probably a the recurring thing we hear is this concept of psychological safety yeah, and, and I look at an, um, another place like Menlo Innovations, which I, I don't necessarily look at them as being product innovative, but they have an innovative way of working. And and talking to guys there too, you you hear things like um, when I go talk to someone, I had there's an expectation about how that person will respond to me. I, there's a cultural expectations of kindness and treating other people well, such that people feel more comfortable to go outside of their comfort zone. They feel, they should say they feel safe to move outside of their comfort zone. Yeah, and I remember the the statement made to me before uh, from one of the leaders I've had, which is I, I trust you and will support whatever decision you make. And And the fundamental idea that comes with that is that you don't need to be making the right decision 
you're supported regardless of the decision and kind of regardless of the outcome of it. Someone's underwriting that risk for you. And the role of leadership in underwriting that risk and creating that environment where they've, they're burdening the risk so that you have the opportunity to try and explore. Yeah, and so f- with that leader, if you had screwed up in some way and something bad had happened, how how would that particular leader have responded? It was fairly clearly communicated that, you know what, just uh, as long as, w- you know, we learn from things, and it's not, it, I don't think he perceived it as his job to, you know, make sure that we learn from things because you got the sense that, you know, he, he, he trusted you and and we all we all had the intention of wanting to do a good job. Um, we didn't want to make mistakes. You know, him trying to teach us a lesson if something went wrong wasn't really adding anything. wasn't being of any value. Uh, so there was the tacit acknowledgement or explicit acknowledgement that you know oh, we you know we own up to mis- we own up to things when they don't go wrong, but that's not a reason to not do them. That's just a reason to learn from them. So what happened, you know, how do we react when things go poorly? How do we react in the face of failure? What are the, what are our reactions and responses as leaders, as an organization? I think that has a really powerful message in setting the tone and culture of a company and then how that company will or organization will innovate. Something I think about too is that not everyone's in an organization that necessarily is going to enable this in fact there's a lot of cultures that have a uh, more of a like a justice seeking or or when something goes wrong they're looking for someone to blame then i'm thinking about this leader you're talking about and and leaders like that who can shield people from that and and create a pocket of safety for the people they're in allowing that innovative risk-taking behavior to exist even in cultures that that aren't like you know, Menlo or Hunter, I, I believe that, that that's the responsibility of leaders and, and, and it is possible. Yeah, and I think that's something we don't talk enough about. We, we, we throw around the word accountability quite a bit, but what does it mean to be accountable? Uh, as a leader, it's my job to be accountable for the actions of my team, of the people below me, whether, whether it was a personal decision or not or something I personally did is, is irrelevant. I, I, I as a leader am owning the everything that my organization does and I am accountable for it and what that actually empowers me to do is bur- take that burden on their behalf and, and be a leader in service of them uh, to give them that freedom and time of space to, to be able to do their jobs. And that's not that's not the same thing as abdication of responsibility by any means, um, but it's a view on leadership that I personally have, and I I think in in industry we can be doing a better job of teaching upcoming leaders that that's that is actually a a, a job of leadership to to ex- take on that ex- responsibility and that accountability and that risk. Yeah, so when that leader's saying, I, I will trust and support whatever you do, that comes with the implicit, and I will take responsibility for the, the outcomes, whatever they may be. And they're, they are, that is, a, an, a, to me, it's an increased level of accountability and responsibility. It's not an abdication at all. Oh, yeah, and then and I'm trying to think from my perspective, what impact did that have on me? And... It was this much more powerful personal connection, right? It's like my leaders got my back. I don't want to let them down. It's not that I don't want to get yelled at because that's not that's not really on the table here. It's like I feel this um, this personal desire to do well by them because they are standing up for me, um, and I think that's a much more powerful motivator reason for doing things it's uh um much more inspiring than the fear-based you know a fear of getting yelled at if you go wrong if you do wrong thanks for joining us today on the agile india podcast uh, we're your hosts chris edwards and sean dunn and we hope to see you again next time